Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news at 6 where we get you the day's top developing stories. I'm Tracy Shilchi and here are the headlines. BJP chief Amit Shah addresses party workers ahead of civic polls in the national capital, accuses the Ahmadmi government of not fulfilling its promises to Delhi. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari delivers the 66th convocation address at Punjab University, underscores the need to defend universities as free spaces and as sources of renewal of liberal values. US President Donald Trump suffers a stunning political setback, fails to repeal Obamacare after Republican leaders pull back the legislation. And the European Union observes the 60th anniversary amid growing fears over the future of the Union. Leaders of 27 European Union countries arrive in Rome for celebrations. Starting with news from the capital, BJP chief Amit Shah has termed the Ahmadmi Party government in Delhi as the most corrupt government. Addressing his party workers ahead of the MCD polls in the national capital, Shah also accused the Ahmadmi Party of not fulfilling its promises. Kick-starting his party's election campaign for the MCD polls in Delhi, BJP President Amit Shah launched a blistering attack on Ahmadmi Party, which heads the state government in national capital. <laughs> इतने अल्प समय में दिल्ली में कोई भी सरकार ने जितना भ्रष्टाचार नहीं किया इतना भ्रष्टाचार आप पार्टी की सरकार ने किया है मित्र शाह आल्सो एक्यूज्ड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ नॉट फुलफिलिंग इट्स प्रॉमिसेस मेड ड्यूरिंग द असेंबली पोल्स मगर आपके ढाई साल समाप्त हो गए हैं और आपने दिल्ली की सरकार जनता के सामने जो वादे किए थे मैं आपका अकाउंट तो नहीं मानता क्योंकि हिसाब तो इससे मांगते हैं जो जिम्मेदार होता है मगर मैं आपको याद दिलाना जरूर चाहता हूं 500 स्कूल नए बनाने की आपने बात करी थी एक भी स्कूल नहीं बना 29000 प्राध्यापकों को लेने की बात करी थी कुछ नहीं हुआ 20 नए डिग्री कॉलेज बनाने का वादा था एक भी नींव नहीं रखी गई तीन नए आईटीआई बनाने थे पांच नए पॉलिटेक्निक बनाने थे कुछ नहीं हुआ यूनिफाइड ट्रांसपोर्ट अथॉरिटी बनानी थी कुछ नहीं हुआ महिलाओं की सुरक्षा के लिए तीन पेज भरकर वादे किए थे तीन लाइन भी नहीं करी आपने exhorting his party workers the bjp chief also termed these polls as good opportunity to strengthen the party base for the assembly polls in 2020 during the day-long workers' meeting at Ramlila Maidan in the national capital, Shah was accompanied by party MPs, senior leaders, as well as some union ministers. Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. Vishal Dahiya, in fact, joining us now from the newsroom for more details on what we are seeing across uh, in, uh, you know, in Delhi, Vishal. Uh, never before have we seen, you know, campaigning for the MCD polls in this manner, uh, where, you know, a party president, a national party president goes campaigning, uh, you know, addressing the workers as well. Uh, Amit Shah, of course, doing that and, you know, in a, in a sense, telling Delhi that they're really serious about these elections. Well, yes, indeed, uh, Tracy, and uh, it's not only BJP's party president, uh, the national president, but uh, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, the Congress's vice president, and uh, uh, you know, if uh, it would be, it would not be wrong, uh, wrong to term his, uh, him as uh, the de facto president of uh, the Congress party. So. The top leadership of the both parties, uh, uh, you know, leading the charge from the front for the MCD polls is a clear indication that for these national parties, it is now becoming a question of pride to go ahead and perform very well in these MCD polls. They have had, a, a, you know, a very, very uh, severe drubbing uh, uh, at the hands of the Aam Aadmi Party in assembly polls, not once but twice uh, uh, consecutively in 2014-2015 in Delhi. And that uh, uh, seems to have uh, not gone down well with uh, the leadership, the top leadership of these two national parties. Uh, and if you look at the present scenario, the BJP uh, is the ruling uh, party in all three uh, MCDs. 
and uh, it is going, you know uh, for fighting a huge anti incumbency uh, since it has been uh, in the power in these uh, uh, three uh, municipal corporations for uh, more than a decade now and it would be very very important for uh, the bjp to go ahead and ensure that uh, the winning streak uh, which it has uh, had uh, since quite some time now and uh, the uh, stellar performance it has had in the uttar pradesh assembly elections uh, uh, does not uh, uh, you know uh, meet a hurdle out here in the national capital and obviously the party leadership would want uh, that the party performs uh, uh, very well in mcd polls and that is why it was not only the party president but uh, there were several union ministers several senior leaders of the party and uh, all uh, uh, the party's uh, members of parliament as well from the uh, delhi ncr so clearly uh, that was an effort uh, today's uh, workers meeting was an effort to go ahead and galvanize the party's uh, uh, you know uh, workforce uh, to ensure that they work at the ground level and uh, uh, they meet those targets uh, which uh, bjp believes it should be able to go ahead and retain if not all three of them then at least uh, two or one of these mcds stay in power and that uh, clearly seems to be the agenda of the congress party as well which has been sidelined in the politics in the national capital not only in terms of uh, uh, the parliamentary results and the assembly polls yes. but also delhi polls as well so clearly uh, the congress also is looking for to gain a foothold in the national capital once again absolutely uh, it's it's going to be very crucial of course for the congress to get any kind of victory at this point of time it doesn't matter whether it's a state whether it's a, or even a local body election or municipal election uh, but you were talking about how bjp of course riding on a high really a victory after victory and this we're not just talking about you know up or even a, or even the other states we're talking about local body elections we're talking about municipal elections a big show of course that we saw recently in mumbai uh, you know in maharashtra and also another big show that we also saw in odisha uh, you know many are not uh, you, you know as uh, i mean it wasn't really reported as widely uh, but in odisha as well they did score quite a bit of the you know municipal polls the urban the local body polls there as well and you know the bjp of course trying to you know cash in on that well yes you're right uh, indeed and that is uh, has also been uh, you know uh, projected uh, by the bjp's leadership as an uh, a sort of a referendum on uh, the uh, decision of demonetization saying that uh, you know uh, the first election uh, which uh, few first few elections which took place immediately after the decision was taken by uh, the nda government at the center were uh, uh, the local bodies elections and uh, the bjp getting a lot of uh, support from the people in those elections is a clear indication that uh, uh, the uh, decision of demonetization has received widespread support from uh, the common people so uh, and and that is something uh, which uh, uh, would now be cemented with their uh, emphatic win in uttar pradesh and uh, uttarakhand as well so obviously uh, uh, you know a better performance or uh, so as to say uh, almost uh, uh, face saving performance in uh, the state of delhi would also do bjp some good and uh, given the fact that uh, you know the aam aadmi party is emerging as uh, one of uh, strong one of the strong uh, opposition forces uh, as of now to the bjp so clearly they would want to go ahead and uh, check uh, uh, you know the growth of aam aadmi party as well yes. uh, th that's that's why uh, you know uh, uh, that much focus which has been given by the bjp's national leadership uh, on uh, local body poll election. such as mcd poll in delhi absolutely absolutely we leave it there vishal thanks so much for joining us on this story thank you home minister rajnath singh on saturday said that india's international borders will be sealed soon He said this at the passing out parade of the border security force at Tekanpur in Gwalior asserting that the sealing of borders would be done as soon as possible he added that borders have become a breeding ground for infiltration and smuggling Rajnath Singh had previously said that the center wants to completely seal the Pakistan border by 2018 by employing a mix of physical barriers and technological tools such as surveillance Assam Chief Minister Shabanand Sonowal has also been called uh, on the also called on the BSF to seal the Bangladesh border to stop illegal migrants from neighboring country from entering. Hum logon ne faisla kiya hai ki jaldi se jaldi Bharat aur Bangladesh ki seema ko ya seal kiya jaye. Aur main janta hu is kaam mein bhi kai mushkilein aa rahi hain. Kahin par pahad hai, kahin jungle hai. कहीं पर रिवराइन एरिया है फिर भी हम लोगों ने फैसला किया है भले ही हमको टेक्नोलॉजिकल सर्विस का सहारा लेना पड़े लेकिन हम इस सीमा को पूरी तरह से सील करेंगे भारत और पाकिस्तान की सीमा को भी हम लोगों ने तय किया है कि जितनी जल्दी से जल्दी हो सके इस सीमा को भी हम सील कर सकते हैं 
जहां जरूरत होगी टेक्नोलॉजिकल सोल्यूशन का भी हम इस्तेमाल करेंगे Ahead of the GST rollout on the 1st of July, the Central Board of Excise and Customs is being renamed to the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs after getting legislative approval. The existing formations of the Central Excise and Service Tax under CBEC have been reorganized to implement and enforce the provisions of the new Goods and Services Tax Bill. In fact, the renamed board will be an important wing of the government in its fight against tax evasion and black money, adding up to 2% to India's GDP growth. It also aims at facilitating a smooth transition for taxpayers to the GST environment. The CBIC will be made up of 21 zones, 101 GST taxpayer services commissionerates, 15 sub-commissionerates, 768 divisions, 3,969 ranges, 49 audit commissionerates and 50 appeals commissionerates. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari today delivered the 66th convocation address at the Punjab University in Chandigarh. The Vice President said that recent incidents in our country have shown that there's much confusion about what a university should be or should not. Stating that the freedom of our universities has been challenged by narrow considerations, the Vice President underscored there's a need to defend them as free spaces and as sources of renewal of liberal values. The Vice President also reminded that the rights to dissent and agitation are ingrained in the fundamental rights under our Constitution that sets out a plural framework and refuses any scope to define the country in narrow sectarian, ideological or religious terms. In a period of rampant distrust of matters intellectual, there is an imperative need to defend the universities as free spaces, as independent, critical repositories of knowledge, and as sources of renewal of liberal values that provide avenues of social mobility and equality to people. Repeated intrusions by the Myanmar army is disrupting lives of villagers on the Indian border. But due to its friendly relations, India has been ignoring these incidents so far. Villagers say that the Myanmar army is destroying households and even commercial establishments that provide employment to them. Our correspondent Akhilesh Suman visited one such village on the India-Myanmar India border where Indians are living under constant fear for their lives and livelihood. This is all that's left of the sawmill in Howland 5 village in Manipur near the Indo-Myanmar border. The mill that used to employ many locals was destroyed by Myanmar's troops on 3rd March 2017, the day when the state had its first phase elections. We have been uh, attacked systematically and uh, repeatedly since 2013, burning our huts and uh, Cultivation. The village is located near Moray town. This pillar shows quite clearly that it's inside the Indian side of the border. But that doesn't keep it safe from Myanmar's intrusions. Locals blame the Indian administration for leaving them at the mercy of the Myanmar army. But so far, neither the state government nor the center has acted on their complaints. <laughs> They are uh, huh, uh. <laughs> approaching me. So, <Okay. laughs> in the name of friendship, we can't do it. Because we are not the authority. I am uh. the chief of the land only, but I am not the authority of, to annexation this area. Yeah. Because I am not... Uh, I'm sp uh, uh, did, you report, yeah. did you report to anyone about this construction? Yeah, I reported uh, to... DC and ADC uh, to concern uh, departments, but they're still... The External Affairs Ministry has left it to the Indian security agencies to provide the answers. First of all, I think uh, some of the aspects that you mentioned are more appropriately dealt with uh, agencies uh, outside this ministry, uh, security agencies, etc., and uh, other agencies which are on the border. Insofar as our larger cooperation with Myanmar is concerned, we do keep engaged with them, and uh, whenever such matters appear or are raised, we take it up with the concerned authorities uh, in Myanmar, and uh, we'll continue to pursue that. If we have any update on the matter, a specific case that you have raised, I will let you know. 
Locals say the March 3rd incident is by no means an isolated one. The Myanmar army has been attacking their settlements since 2013. The army men launched surprise raids, burned down their houses and threatened the residents to leave. A trend that residents say will continue as long as the Indian government does not launch a concerted protest against it. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's get you more national news updates in Nationwide. The Election Commission transferred Chennai Police Commissioner G. Uh, S. George after a complaint by the DMK. The move comes ahead of the RK Nagar Assembly bipoles in Tamil Nadu. The election will be held on the 12th of April, more than four months after the death of the then Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J. Jalalitha. Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh allocated portfolios to his cabinet ministers today, keeping home, transport, general administration, sericulture, tourism, IT and vigilance. Deputy Chief Minister Y. Joykumar Singh will look after finance, excise, taxation, science and technology, economics and statistics and civil aviation. L. Jayanta Kumar was given health, family welfare, law and legislative. The distribution of portfolios was preceded by the announcement of the names of 12 parliamentary secretaries. Hundreds of people cycled their way through the roads of national capital to spread awareness about energy conservation on the occasion of Earth Hour today. People from all walks of life participated in the event and covered 20 kilometers on bicycles. Lights at several iconic monuments and buildings will be switched off for an hour from 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. today. We'll have a quick break here. More news follows in a bit. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Let's get international news now. And U.S. President Donald Trump suffered a stunning political setback on Friday in a Congress controlled by his own party. This was after Republican leaders pulled back the legislation to repeal Obamacare that was a major 2016 election campaign promise of the president and his allies. Republican leaders had planned a vote on the measure after Trump cut off negotiations with Republicans late on Thursday night. He issued an ultimatum to vote on Friday. However, Republican moderates, as well as the most conservative lawmakers, objected to the legislation. The White House and House leaders were unable to come up with a plan that satisfied both. Accepting his defeat, U.S. President Donald Trump said that he was very, very close to getting enough support in the House of Representatives and, that, uh, and now he will probably move on to tax reform. Speaking at the Oval Office, Donald Trump also said that the onus is now on Democratic leaders to work with him on a way to fix the health care law. However, the House of Representatives Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi credited Friday as a great day for the United States. Yeah, we were very close. Uh, it was a very, very tight margin. We had no Democrat support. We had no votes from the Democrats. Uh, they weren't going to give us a single vote, so it's a very difficult thing to do. Just remember, this is not our bill. This is their bill. Now, when they all become civilized and get together and try and work out a great health care bill for the people of this country, we're open to it. We're totally open to it. Today is a great day for our country. It's a victory. What happened on the floor is a victory for the American people, for our seniors, for people with disabilities, for our children, for our veterans. Top two senators urged the Trump administration to push for the sale of F-16 fighter jets to India to counter security threats and balance China's growing military power in the Pacific. India has launched an effort to expand its combat aircraft fleet and the Competition has reportedly narrowed down to Lockheed's F-16 and Saab's Gripen. Making a strong case for the sale of F-16s to India, Senators Mark Warner from Virginia and John Cornyn from Texas said that this would deepen the India-U.S. strategic defense relationship and cement cooperation between the two countries for decades to come. In a joint letter to U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, the two senators wrote, and I quote, Given the strategic significance of India selecting a U.S. aircraft as a mainstay for its future air force and the potential for a decision this year, we ask that the administration make the fighter acquisition a priority during initial bilateral discussions, unquote. We'll keep you updated on that story. Meanwhile, leaders of 27 European Union countries, excluding the United Kingdom, of course, arrived in Rome on Saturday to attend a ceremony to mark the EU's 60th birthday. Prime ministers and presidents gathered at the Compidoglio Palace to mark the 1957 founding treaty of Rome. However, the celebrations have been affected by a string of crises, including prolonged economic turmoil and influx of migrants and Britain's decision to leave the bloc, the last one raising fears of the future of the Union itself. And here are more international news updates in Global Buzz. At least three people were injured after a gunman opened fire outside a metro station in the city of Lille in, southern, in northern France. Armed police rushed to the scene and sealed off the streets. According to reports, the shots were fired at Jacques Favrier Square. The motive behind the shooting is not yet known. The shooter is reported to be still on the loose. At least 16 people were killed in overnight airstrikes on a prison in the rebel-held city of Idlib in northwest Syria. According to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, the dead included prisoners and prison guards. The strikes were believed to have been carried out by Russian warplanes. Myanmar has rejected the UN Rights Council's decision to investigate allegations that security officers have murdered and raped Rohingya Muslims, saying the probe would only inflame the conflict. The Geneva-based body agreed on Friday to urgently dispatch a fact-finding mission to investigate the allegations. At least nine people were killed and two others sustained injuries after an operation platform collapsed at a power plant in South China's Guangdong province. 
According to the Xinhua News Agency, the incident took place at the number 7 thermal power plant in the provincial capital this morning. The iconic Las Vegas Bellagio Hotel was plunged into chaos following reports of gunshots which forced tourists to flee the venue in panic. People were forced to hide under tables. Police have called it an attempted armed raid on a Rolex store inside the complex and a man has been arrested for it. The investigation is still underway. And now to cricket, where Kuldeep Yadav took four wickets on his test debut, restricting Australia to 300 in their first innings on day one of the fourth test match in Dharamshala. The 22-year-old finished with figures of 4 for 68, while Umesh Yadav took two wickets. Ravi Chandran Ashwin, Ravinder Jadeja and Bhuvneshwar Kumar took one wicket each. For the Aussie, Steve Smith was the best batsman as he slammed his 20th test 100. David Warner and Matthew Wade also contributed with half centuries. In reply, India were, were, were just zero at stumps after playing just one over. What a delivery. It's a big turner coming back. And that's a beauty of a delivery. Absolutely. That's all we have for you on the News at 6. Have a good evening.